Hello guys, today we are going to show you how to install Grouser Crad Enterprise without Composer. So let's have first a very brief um, summary of what the installation without Composer is. So basically if you are not familiar with Composer or you are not using any PHP frameworks at all uh, or you don't want to use Terminal, Terminal frightens you for some reason, uh, you can always install uh, the Grasser Recrat Enterprise easily without any use of the Composer. So basically at the installation guide you can see there are two options. The one is with the Composer and the other one without. Clicking the without Composer and you can see all the instructions that I will describe you now. So let's start. We will, uh, you will probably have an access to the user's page and there you will download the enterprise version without Composer. So let's download it together. We are downloading it. As you can see, this is bigger than the one with, uh, with the Composer, as it has all the libraries and all the CSS JavaScript files there. So let's unzip the, the, the zip file that we just uh, downloaded and let's see what's inside. So here there are three folders. The one is the examples. Uh, so here we have simple PHP files that you will uh, copy really for a very basic example. So th you can start. We'll see everything uh, now. Later on, uh, we have the library. So these are PHP libraries that Grouser Crad in, uh, needs in order to run. This can be separately in a hidden folder or whatever. And we have the public folder and these are the JavaScript, CSS, fonts, etc. file that it will be accessible through the web. Um, so I, I can give you an example. These are like uh, um, some JavaScript, some very basic JavaScript that a grocery crowd will use automatically. Uh, and in order to have grocery crud enterprise to work. So let's continue. So here are these three basic folders. So let's go to our demo. So I've created the folder demo. This has nothing more than static pages, static PHP pages. Um, I started with a very clean approach. So these are this is the website, so this is a template really. It has an about page, a sample post, and a contact form. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I'm not doing anything special. So these are clean uh, HTML files really that uh, has uh, are included in the PHP. So it doesn't even have any PHP code inside, just to make sure that you understand that it doesn't require any libraries or any framework in order to start working on this. So let's start with um, our files that we have. So where is the folder? I think it's somewhere here. Yep. So here are the basic folders, public. Uh, and here we have the folder with all the assets inside. So we are copying the grocery crud public folder. Uh, let's have it side by side just to make it simpler. Uh, we are adding at the modules. So these are modules that are uh, primarily public modules. So we have font awesome, jQuery, uh, bootstrap, uh, this is what the theme had and I just included like that. And we also have the grocery crud. The next step, we are adding the libraries. Uh, I like the folders name library, so I'm putting it as libraries. And then we have the example. So from the examples, um, I will really just take everything, copying them, them here, and we will organize them better uh, later with a better way. Let's clean it up a little bit. Great. Uh, so now theoretically we are ready uh, to start with the uh, installation. The very first thing that we need to do 
is to have the database configurations ready. So let's have our uh, configuration. Here um, I'm adding my dummy um, dummy data for the database dummy credentials sorry and here the this is uh, required also the config is also required and let's explain briefly what it has so it's the default language the assets folder so the assets folder is the folder that we will use for grocery crud for its assets so in current in current projects at the demo we've added to the modules so here we've added at modules grocery craft i'm naming it with different um, folder names just to understand the like that it doesn't matter whatever your folder structure is so here is modules that's great let's add it to the modules uh, the default per page paging options environment still development that's fine uh, backend cache the default is true and we will also specify the cache uh, folder so the cache folder is saying real path dir cache so that's fine because here is the um, the basic path of the dir and it's saying cache that the cache folder folder does exist it is um, it is very recommended to have a cache folder in order to optimize some database queries right so now now the, that we've added our configurations let's see our example but we will really copy it right so here we have the example and it's basically this code I will not uh, I will not going to explain you now I will just copy it at the index page in order to see how easy we can implement it so I'm copying it we will change it a little bit I will show it to you straight away so as you can see this is a very basic web page we are copying the PHP code we are closing the PHP tag and let's see so uh, this has the include vendor autoload that in our case is libraries autoload right uh, we are including the database php that it's at the same folder that's correct config php that that's the same folder and then uh, we are just including the basic lines for grocery crud right then the output we are saying if it's a json response then exit with the output that's fine and here we are collecting the css files js files and output and then we have the include uh, that it is a very basic uh, php page um, that it's actually collecting the css file js files and output okay so for now i will exclude this just to make it more simple for you so let's go again the very basic include that it has the um, libraries um, autoload using the grocery crud namespace including database and config um, the basic lines that you will also see many examples so setting table setting subject and render a three liner here to output it to json and then you are collecting the CSS files, JS files, and the output, right? So let's see uh, what we will have as a result at the new index PHP page. So this is the previous page, and if we refresh it, we can see that this is the exact same uh, page. Uh, if we page source, we can see that nothing really happen this is what uh, we were expecting really as that means that all this code works without any problem if we had any issue we we should have an error there so i will give you an example let's say that i forgot this it will throw 
uh, a syntax error. So that means everything worked as expected, right? So here we are getting uh, some very basic output from the render. This is not the first request, it's not a JSON response. So we have those specific files. So let's go and see what we are getting. Um, so here the CSS files, let's um, var dump the CSS files, the JS files, and the output. And let's refresh it, it will throw many things. Let's page source it to see. It didn't work anyway. So here is just the CSS really uh, files. And here you have the JS files. And this is the output as a string. Um, that's it really, nothing more special. So here we just need to do a for each for the CSS files, for a for each for the JS files, and the output. So let's do it really fast. So we have the CSS files here and we will put it below this line. So opening for each CSS file as CSS file and then this one here closing opening and let's copy the this thingy copying it here and instead having the extra CSS file. The same thing will happen for the JS files. Instead, we will add it at the bottom. The above uh, JavaScript, by the way, is just um, the uh, template uh, JavaScript really, nothing important. So JS files as JS file and here instead it is the script source and echo JS file. You can find all these examples, so you will not write them, you can basically copy paste them. Right? And finally, we'll have the output. So the output, I will put it up in the content of the page. So this is the site header, I will put it right here. So let's add echo output and let's see what we just did so I'm removing the var dump and let's see the results of it and as you can see uh, the very first example didn't work to be honest I didn't expect that, that but that's much better because now we can see an actual example uh, I would prefer that because if you have uh, everything that it works at the tutorial, but basically for you it didn't, it is better to happen at the tutorial. So let's investigate what the problem is. Uh, I'm using Chrome. If you are using uh, Firefox, you can use Firebug. So I will inspect. I'll press the right click inspect and then go to network. So usually we, we want to see the network um, changes uh, and you can see in the console as well that the most of the errors is 404. So let's go to the network to see what 404s we have. So 404 means that page not found. Uh, as you can see here, this is not found. So let's open the link. Basically here it's saying module grocery crud CSS. So it doesn't start with the test uh, demo uh, that our folder is. So I, I will give you an example what I mean test demo now there's the file so we we just forgot to add this as we add we added at the config file that the root is starting for the module so let's bring our config file back here 
and let's start with the test uh, demo. So now this is our assets folder. So we start at the very beginning of our project slash test slash demo and then uh, where the actual folder is. Because remember, this is what uh, the user can see from the web. And the root doesn't start from our project. Great, so let's move this out and let's refresh our, let's close the inspect and let's refresh to see. So now everything seems that it worked. When we, we say everything, we mean everything. So you can edit, you can see that the URL is automatically added there. You can save, you can remove something, you can add a customer. So everything here works as we are expecting to work. Uh, as you can see, I'm still playing with the CRUD. It doesn't require any other step. However, let's see, let's investigate of another bug. So let's go back to our code. And let's say that we have a bug at the PHP code. So I will just have instead of, so let's say that the output is a server response and we'll have here error die and then exit, right? So here, if we refresh the page, we will see we can't process because you have this error. So something went wrong. You can also inspect it and see, you will see that not all the requests did are done. So at the end, when it's trying to call the initial, it's actually throwing this error message. Something for you to know, it's really useful to understand and you can investigate uh, about the problem. I hope you don't have this kind of issues, but in case you have it, you can quickly do a debug. Maybe you forgot something really small. Um, some of the issues you may have is uh, like the cache folder. So for example, the cache folder can be uh, not writable. So let's give an example here. So we have our cache folder here because we've added the cache. We can see some cache here, right? And let's remove completely the cache folder from here. So let's delete it. Now, because there isn't a cache folder, as you can see, if we refresh the page, we will again see the error. So this uh, error is not so user friendly. So if we go to the network and actually open the tab to see the actual HTML, right? We can see with message cache directory, not found, not a directory. So it's saying all of this thing, uh, the cache fi file directory couldn't be found. It's saying exactly where the problem is. So now if we go and create the cache folder that remember we specified here. So here it's the real path um, cache. Because I can give you an example because you are starting from here, you can easily uh, just do this. But just be careful. It's better to write it with the way that um, we are writing it with this kind of code, right? Okay, so let's create again the cache folder. Cache. Yeah, now it works. And let's refresh it. And it, as you can see at the beginning is a slight more slow. But if we refresh it because we cast the queries, it's faster. Okay and the edit and the add and everything works. Uh, it took um, more than I expected because I'm loading like uh, 100 to 1000 of records, but still it is very, very fast. So here, if you refresh it, you can see very fast responses of everything. We can search and you can see. So here it's, it's really search of uh, 
100,000 of entries and it's really fast. So there you have it. Of course, you can put the output wherever you like. Uh, and these are the steps. So basically copying the code, adding the configuration required. Remember, whenever you have a problem, probably it's something at your configuration. Try to debug it by yourself. And of course, if you have any question, uh, just send me an email and I will um, try to respond. Uh, something last, as you can see, this is the uh, not the default uh, CSS of Bootstrap. This is just because uh, the guy here added uh, their own Bootstrap, so it's nothing more than that. And that means that the Bootstrap theme is um, is skinnable. So you you can add your own skin at the, the Bootstrap. So if your template has already some CSS fixes, uh, then it means that it will be applied there as easy as that. So there you have it. Uh, that's all. I hope you enjoyed the, the video. Um, click to the like button if you did like this video and you want to have more videos like that. And speak to you later. Bye.